folks, welcome back to Thunder Mesa Studio, where today I'm going to show you my methods for painting and ballasting flex track. Here I have some ON30 flex track that's been laid through the town of Calico and is all ready for paint and ballast. The first thing you want to do is make sure that the track power is turned off, and then I like to take a little masking tape and uh, mask off the points of the turnouts before painting. For a base coat, I like to use Rust-Oleum or Krylon dark brown camouflage spray paint. It's super dark and super matte, so it does a really nice job of simulating the look of old and weathered railroad track. Now we'll let that dry for a bit before going on to the next step. You'll be cleaning the rails a lot during this process, and I recommend doing it after every step. Here I'm just using a Bright Boy abrasive track cleaner to get the paint I just sprayed on here off of the top of the rails. I'm doing it now because if you wait more than 24 hours, it gets much, much harder to remove. For the next step, I'm going to be using some inexpensive uh, acrylic craft paints to dry brush some color and variation into the, uh, into the plastic ties here. And for that, I like to use, um, this is actually an oil painting brush. It's a stiff hog's bristle brush, filbert shape. You don't have to use this kind of brush, it's just my preference. And we just take a little bit of the color and wipe about 99% of it off. I like a piece of corrugated cardboard for that because I can see how much paint is left on the brush. And then you just take the brush and lightly go over the, uh, the ties like this. And immediately you'll start to see the, uh, the detail of the, the molded in grain and spikes come through. And the trick here is to vary it. So I'm gonna change colors here now, get kind of more of a brown. Most of that off. Just to add a little variation here. Dry brushing dries really fast, so time to go in and clean the tops of the rails again. The dry brushing is going to look a little harsh at this stage, but it will be toned down in the next couple of steps that we're going to do. Now to ballast the main line on Thunder Mesa, I actually use chick grit which is a uh, kind of a decomposed granite product, which is used for raising baby chicks. It, uh, they need it in their gullet to be able to digest their food. So you give it, you mix it in with their feed when they're young. But it's also very handy for O-scale model railroading because the size is just about perfect for this scale. And to apply it, this, this stuff is kind of a pink granite color. There's a big one in there, like that. And uh, to apply it, I just use a Dixie cup, good old Dixie cups, and uh, go right down the center. Like that. I'm gonna be putting a lot more on than I need because I'm gonna go back and groom it after I put it on here. So first I go down the middle and then I come along the shoulders of the road bed, put some on like this. You gotta be real careful around turnouts to not get any in the way of the moving parts, the points and the throw bar of the turnout. 
And uh, that's where the grooming comes in. You're gonna go back and really go through and make sure, every, make sure everything's clear and will operate properly. So now we just go through with a soft brush, clean everything up. Actually, I use two different sizes of soft brushes. This is a one inch flat and a little, I don't know, number eight round here. And uh, clean up any excess ballast. Bring it all down level with the tops of the ties and make sure it's not up here in the webbing to interfere with the flanges on the wheels. And those go over. And most importantly, down here in the turnout, make sure there's no boulders messing with the moving parts of the turnout here. And that takes a little time and a lot of patience. Okay, I've gotten this about as good as I can get it. Everything looks good and clear. And we're ready to glue the ballast in place. We're going to lock it in this position. And the first step to that is to spray everything down with some wet water. Uh, wet water, of course, is just regular water with a couple of drops of liquid detergent added to break the surface tension. And we're just going to light mist. You don't want to spray it hard enough to move everything around that you just so carefully placed. So light mist on here, get it all nice and wet. And while it's still wet, we're gonna spray it all down with some diluted white glue. Now, some model railroaders like to use matte medium uh, in different uh, ratios. A lot of people use 50-50, some use four to one. I've used white glue, I've used matte medium interchangeably. Frankly, personally for me, I don't see much difference. My preferred ratio is three to one, three parts water to one part white glue. Your mileage may vary, but this is what works for me. Again, a light mist. And you wanna spray it until you see that white glue cooling up in there. Don't wanna to get too much glue on the, uh, once again, the moving parts of the turnout. Take a dry paintbrush and go in and it'll suck that glue right up out of there. And it's a really good idea while this is drying to work those points back and forth so they don't get glued into place. Other than that, there's really not much to do now except wait for the glue to dry. Okay, well, it's been about 24 hours. The glue's all dry, and guess what we're gonna do next? That's right, clean the track again. And after giving the rail heads a nice thorough scrubbing, it's a good idea to go back with a hobby knife and check for any rocks or pieces of ballast that might have got kicked up into the rail webbing and just kind of get those out of there. Also, you want to make sure your turnout is still operating properly. And there's nothing in the way of that mechanical operation hindering that. That looks pretty good. All right. And then it's time to ring in the shop back and clean up any loose ballast that might have gotten away. And now it's time for the final step in this process, and that's going back with some colored chalks and just adding a little bit more variation, kind of blending everything together. You can use uh, commercial products for this, like uh, Bragdon's or some others. Uh, I prefer to use just regular artists' uh, colored chalk, which I grate uh, on, a, on some sandpaper. <laughs> It's cheaper and works for me, and I get all kinds of different colors that I can use. And I use them in all kinds of weathering. And here I've just got some uh, kind of an earthy red-brown, which matches my scenery coloring, and some blacks and grays. And I'm just going to go in over the ties here and just give a light dusting. All right, over here is where the Calico station is going to be located. 
So you've got trains sitting. And anytime you've got trains sitting, you've got trains dripping grease and oil and cinders. So you want to make that especially kind of dark and black. The locomotive generally sits right up here when the train's at the station. So lots of black between the rails there. And here's how the track looks after the chocks are applied. Uh, pretty happy with the way that looks. And of course the next step is to clean the rail. Clean the rail heads one more time. But this time we're going to do it with a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol just to get the chalk off the tops of the rail heads. Well, I think we've about got it. There's really nothing else left to do now except run some trains through and see if there's any adjustments that need to be made, any dirty spots I might have missed, but it's time to test and adjust. Looks like everything's working pretty good. And when I go back to finish the scenery here, I'll add some weeds and junk and more detail along the right of way. But for now, I think this little project's done. Thanks for coming along for the ride, amigos. I appreciate it. See you next time. Adios for now. <laughs>